we are letting you know how you're going to be voting in about a month from today. And joining me is Chris Musando, he's IEBC's ICT manager. And next to him is Pamela Witi from Saffron Morph. They are the suppliers of this scheme's technology. And uh, she'll be demonstrating it as our case study today with her bio data, which is already uh, in this dummy system as uh, Chris walks us through. So once Kenyans show up at a polling booth um, on August the 8th, what will happen? Now, once uh, Kenyans show up at a polling station, uh, they will see this kit. This is the package, the way it comes. And uh, they will produce their identity card. And then the first thing that will be done is for them to be identified biometrically uh, with this system. I think Pam should uh, be able to show us how the biometric, you see the light up here, right. shows that the, the system is ready for biometric identification of the voter that has appeared in the polling station on that day. Okay. So she will put her finger and the system will be able to identify her as a, as a voter on that particular day. So she has been identified and the system has already pulled out her, her details, right. uh, ready for her to be, to be verified by the, by the polling clerk so that to proceed, uh, she can proceed to, to receive the ballot papers and vote. Now, uh, after she has been identified successfully, uh, we also want to show you uh, if she tries to come back and vote a second time uh, in the system. So she will try again to see if she can be able to try and vote the second time. Okay. The system is ready for identification. Uh, she will be identified. And the system will, will show that, uh, will, will, uh, will, 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 uh, will uh, identify her as a voter. But because she has already been identified, you've had the alarm from the system. Right. And you've seen the message in the system. Right. This is one of the deterrence mechanisms that we've already put in the system to ensure that uh, the system does not uh, identify people. Uh, more than once in and terms I'll just of voting. read it out in case uh, the, the font is a little too small for you to read. The, uh, there at the red it says this voter has already been identified. Exclamation mark in red. So yes. nothing more can happen. Nothing more can hap happen beyond that. And mm -hmm. once the alarm has sounded, because we put the alarm mm -hmm. in order to alert the people in the polling station because they are party agents, candidate agents who are then ha able to, uh, to verify right. that this voter has actually voted. Okay. Yes. And so it's that simple. It is that simple. The law tells us to make the technology very simple mm. in order for Kenyans to be able to vote quickly and the system should be able to, 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 to put in place controls that, uh, that uh, prevent things like fraud in voting. Okay. Yes. So once they've, they've entered it electronically, they will receive a hard copy of the, the actual ballot paper, which they'll proceed to tick and put in on the various boxes. Exactly. Okay. Uh, once they have uh, been identified, they'll proceed to be issued with uh, manual ballot papers to go and vote. All right, so you've heard the concerns by the opposition up until today. They're saying that there are still dead voters as part of the register, and somehow this can be used for ballot staffing. Um, how can you allay those fears given the technology that's in place? And this technology is an integrated technology as we are required to implement by the law. It is called the Kenya Integrated Elections Management System. And this identification process, this tablet here, has the results transmission system integrated with the identification system. So at the end of the voting period, people who are identified by this device through either biometrics or through alphanumeric search for those Kenyans who don't have biometrics, at the time of results transmission, this system will be able to pick the number of the, of the people who have been identified throughout the day uh, by, with this device and put it as a control figure in the results transmission system. So for example, the law tells us that a polling station must have a cap of 700 voters. Mm -hmm. So what we expect is that only 700, a maximum of 700 voters, if that is the case in that polling station, because the number may not be 700. 700 is just the, the, the maximum that it is, yes. but it can be below. Mm -hmm. So any number that has been identified, mm -hmm. that will be the control number that will be used for results transmission. So for example, if only 500 people turned up on election day mm -hmm. in a particular polling station, then the transmission uh, part of these results will only be able to be controlled by that 500 voters, not the maximum 700, All right. which means nobody can be identified twice and only people who are identified by this device, their results will be able to be transmitted. So there, this fear of dead voters arising and coming to vote, I don't think it is founded. Because the primary method of identification on election day 
will be biometrics as, you have, as we have demonstrated to you and you have seen the gadget working and even preventing uh, double identification by voters. How secure is the system from hacking? This system is very secure and we've put in uh, a lot of effort in terms of implementation of security to ensure that an end-to-end -end security system has been implemented for this solution. Uh, we have three levels of security. We have the hardware level. All these devices have SIM cards, two SIM cards, mm -hmm. and they're also Wi-Fi enabled. And the Wi-Fi that is in this device cannot connect to just any Wi-Fi. It is only specific to a Wi-Fi device that will deploy on election day. And it only reads the key of that Wi-Fi device before it actually connects to it. Right. So it's a secure network. Okay. Now, these devices are hard-coded in the back end of the results transmission system. So no other foreign device can be introduced in the network to be able to transmit anything. Because only the devices we'll use for election will be hard-coded in the back end of the results transmission system. That is one level of security. The other level of security is that this data and this device is encrypted with the highest encryption keys. 256-bit encryption uh, technology. So any data that is going to be transmitted from this device to the back end is encrypted data. So if somebody inter intercepts that data, they will not be able to read it because it is just something that they cannot read due to the encryption. In the back end, we put in mechanisms to secure uh, the environment. Basically, we have firewalls, and we have, uh, we have applications mm -hmm. that are protecting uh, on the borders of our, of our back end of the, of the technology. So we have put in enough security mm -hmm. at the network level. We have also put encryption at the network level. We have dedicated APNs, mm -hmm. which are basically private networks. We are working with all the mobile uh, network carriers to ensure that uh, uh, we, put we bring everybody on board in order to ensure that we have backup for, for, for transmission. This device, as I've said, has two SIM cards. Mm -hmm. It has a network management software inside here that in any polling station in the country. You're pretty much saying that this thing is foolproof. How certain are you that these gadgets would fail you on August 8th? Can you tell the country with certainty that at every polling station this technology will work? Um, this technology would work 100%. We have learned our lesson from uh, the failures of 2013 and we are doing everything right this time round. Reason being, one of the failures of 2013 was the issues of power. Now we have this device that has 12 powers of running uh, per day. 12 hours of power? 12 hours of power right. this, of this device. Mm -hmm. Now we have an external power uh, to support another 12 hours. This uh, battery here can charge this gadget to f uh, full power, which means it gives it another 12 hours. In total, we get 24 hours. That was one failure of 2013. The other failure of 2013 was the back-end capacity in terms of processing of results as they come in. Now, we have invested in state-of-the-art uh, data centers right. that we have implemented recently mm. and are ready for the elections on the 8th of the August. Well, Chris, this is the interview that the country will refer to on August 9th. Thank Thanks you. for coming in. Thank you, Anne. And good luck and thank you for your demonstration.